Hello, my name is Deval Patel, and I'm here to dare you to rethink social responsibility globally using my 20 years of experience in 70 countries around the world as a learning tool. It's important to frame social responsibility. Some will say that it is charity and philanthropy. Others will say that it is giving of yourself, volunteering, and helping out. Some will say that it's an organizational management strategy tool. Some will say it's simply about saving the planet. I'm not going to give you one precise definition, because it's probably all of that and a lot more. But my experience has taught me that all of those approaches are limited because of certain factors. So it really is time to rethink social responsibility in a bigger, comprehensive, and strategic, holistic way. Before we go on this global tour around the world on social responsibility, I want to give you a quick background story about myself and what my thinking is related to social responsibility and my desire to help. Ever since I've been a child, I would go from the United States back to India. My parents moved from India to the United States in the late 60s and early 70s in pursuit of the great American dream. And so, during our winter breaks at school time, we would go back to India and visit family and friends. And I began to notice as I was getting older that the way I lived in the U.S. was far different than most in India. And I was very privileged here in America. So it started to shape my desire to want to help people, particularly those in developing communities. And I wanted to make a difference. So many years later, I got a master's in public health and a PhD to start working on global health initiatives all over the place. In HIV AIDS, family planning, malaria, in small clinics and health systems. And I wanted to make a tremendous difference. I wanted to have impact. I wanted to change the world. Boy, was I wrong. I was naive, I was young, I was immature, I was overconfident. Because I thought I knew it all. I was Dr. Patel, after all. But when I went to these communities, I saw that there were already hundreds of people working there on thousands of different social issues in various ways. And I realized quickly that they were there to help people do socially responsible things. However, most of those programs that I was working on, I noticed that there were a lot of mistakes and failures than successes. So a question started to get put into me and plagued me, which was, given the multitude of efforts in communities globally, how do we rethink social responsibility initiatives to make a bigger difference? To answer this question, we'll first go to Africa, then we'll go to Asia, and finally to South America. Africa is a continent that's very dear to me because I've spent a tremendous amount of time there. Of the 54 countries there, I've been to at least 35 of them and have lived in many of them for extensive periods of time. Many years ago, some colleagues and I went to a remote village in the interior of Africa. While we were there, immediately this little girl of five years of age came up to me, and she wanted to hold my hand. She didn't understand what I was saying, didn't speak English, yet she wanted to show me around in her community. So first, she took me over to see these two women doing what they were doing. Next, she walked me over to the building where I was going to have a series of meetings with some government officials. Outside, there were a tremendous number of men, women, and children dancing and singing and having a great time. As we sat inside the meeting with my colleagues and the government officials, it became clear that these individuals outside were inquisitive as to what we were going to be doing. So I sat down and I got served a meal, a small little lunch with lots of food. There was plenty of leftover that was stored in a cooler. Well, halfway through the meeting, a lot of the kids started watching what I was eating, and I could tell that they were probably hungry. So, during a break, I got up, picked up the cooler, and started giving away the leftover foods. Instantly, my colleagues said that I shouldn't have done that, that I was creating a dependency, and it was sending the wrong message, that I didn't understand the local context. I vehemently disagreed with them, but it did make me rethink the role of culture and the local context in terms of social responsibility initiatives. Now let's go over to Asia, which has two of the most populated countries in the world, China and India, which collectively have, as you probably know, 2.5 billion people of the world's 7 billion. I don't want to talk about Asia, generally speaking, 
speaking, but hone in on India specifically. Here are some images that show some of the daily challenges of living in India. Here's a small girl who has to walk to school by herself every single day. Here is a fruit seller on a busy road where his produce is constantly contaminated by bugs, insects, dust, and dirt from the road. Here is a busy road where you see grime and pollution, and you see no one following any sort of travel or traffic rules whatsoever. This is a wonderful country, and I've spent many years there doing various things with different stakeholders, including the government. Well, in 2013, the government passed a national mandate on corporate social responsibility, which stipulates that companies of a certain financial annual turnover have to spend 2% of their net profits from the past three years on social responsibility initiatives. This is fantastic, but on the other side, it begins to show the organizational challenges, which we'll talk about, to implement such a law. To implement such a law. The problem is, is that you have places like this where I worked at, which is a local NGO in the country, which, of which there are over two million, depending on how you count them and you look at them. These NGOs are filling the void between the government sector and the private companies working on social responsibility. Unfortunately, their organizational capacity is limited because they don't have the management skills, the human resources, the technical and programmatic abilities, and so on and so forth. So in theory, the government law in 2013, puts together a nice package for social responsibility, bringing these partners together. But in reality, the partners that have to implement, like these not-for-profits, are hampered by their capacity. An organizational capacity crunch is in place. Now let's walk over to South America, which, in particular, I want to talk about Peru, which is probably most famously known for the Incan civilization, Machu Picchu, if you've ever been there, and wonderful ceviche dishes. Many years ago, I was in a community healthcare system environment working there. And these are some of the images of that community healthcare system in a small little oceanside town many miles away from the capital, Lima. This is an outdoor waiting area. And here you see that you can buy some medicine, supplies, and food as you wait. This is an outdoors building where you can get services, and there's educational information on tuberculosis. This is the entryway to the triage center, and there are paper instructions on a wall that's chipping away. Unfortunately, this next image shows the problem underneath this infrastructure, which everyone thinks is great. It is a series of medical records that are found all over the health care facility in the community. So don't worry about privacy or confidentiality. Don't worry about your medicines. Don't worry about what happened at your last medical visit or the one that's coming up. Everyone's okay with it. The community stakeholders have figured out how to deal with this sort of situation. But what they aren't asking is, if I can improve this process and system with the medical records, can I become more effective and efficient and deliver more services? Clearly, they need to think about redesigning this social community responsibility initiative at the healthcare facility. We've just taken a quick tour of some regions in the world and talked about social responsibility. It is time to rethink how we visualize it at three different levels with three different approaches. First, at the individual level, social responsibility must ask ourselves what the other person that we're trying to help is really about. What are their needs, desires, culture, background, context, their daily struggles? If we don't ask these questions, then we will never really know them and make a series of mistakes. Ask ourselves, do we really know them before we start to think about whether they need our help or not. In the context of Africa, I was told I didn't understand the local situation. But I thought, did my colleagues even spend time in the community themselves, walking around, talking, interacting with the villagers? Did they understand their daily challenges? Did they ask them for ideas? Did they even wonder whether we should be there to begin with? These sort of questions pointed out for me the need for cultural competency, which simply are the shared and congruent values beliefs, and behaviors that we need in order to understand someone in any given situation. So as a result, my first call to action is that I ask you at an individual level to think about social responsibilities that include cultural sensitivity, cultural awareness, and cultural competencies. Otherwise, I fear if we don't put ourselves in the shoes of someone else, we will continue to make assumptions and make major mistakes from the past. 
Second, at the organizational level, organizations must think about building their capacities before they embark on social responsibility programs in their communities. They need to know what capacity building is about. In other words, these are the processes for developing the abilities, the skills, and the tools, and the support mechanisms to deliver the programs that they want to put in place, and the organizational mission. These are those building blocks that every organization needs to have these programs out there. In the case of India, it's clear that the national law on social responsibility at the corporate level is wonderful. However, the corporations are hampered by their human resources and ability to put the funds into action optimally. The NGOs that will deliver the programs on the ground are hampered by their capacities or building blocks, and as a result, they are limited. Clearly, a divide exists. Something needs to be done and a plan needs to be put in place. So my second call to action is to ask organizations to rethink their capacity building approaches with regard to their social responsibilities. They need to think about themselves first before they can help the community at large. It's very similar to when a flight attendant says, put on your oxygen mask first before helping others. Why do you think they do that? In order to help others, we have to help ourselves first. Corporations, organizations, and the government agencies must do that. Finally, at the community level, social responsibility initiatives must think about the impact and the rate of return that they're having in order to become more effective and more efficient over time. Rate of return simply is a measure of how much gain or loss that I have on an investment over time. Take the stock exchange. I put $100 in, a year later I get 1,000. Wow, that's a great rate of return. Similarly, our, our community social responsibility initiatives must think about their social impact and their social rate of return in order to become more effective and efficient over time with the resources that they have on a limited basis. In the context of Peru, all the community stakeholders are okay with the infrastructure, but they haven't thought a level below in terms of the process and the system which needs to be redesigned in order to become more effective and efficient with the resources. They may actually need less doctors than they have in order to deliver the services that they have. In other words, my third call to action is to ask all community stakeholders to think about the metrics that they need in order to redesign the community programs in place. Daring you to rethink social responsibility at three different levels and at three different approaches is critical. And I think this type of thinking is exactly what Mother Teresa is talking about when she states, I want you to be concerned about your next door neighbor. Do you know your next door neighbor? This is the crux of the matter. Now, I've told you a lot of stories and shown you a lot of images to explain my thoughts about social responsibility. I want to conclude now with one final image. This is my son, Anil, of seven years of age, many years ago. And he is holding a wonderful friend's newborn baby. He's probably full of trepidation and initially was probably thinking, Mom, what in the hell do I do now? But if you look at this candid picture closely, you see a smile on his face, you see a bit of pride, and you see some responsibility in his hands. And that's exactly what Mother Teresa was probably talking about. I think we can all agree now, finally, that calling social responsibility social responsibility is probably old school. And I think what we should call it moving forward is exactly what it really is. Impact on humanity. Thank you.